when you get older. Yeah, but Daddy, do you want to share it with you? You want to share these? Yeah. When you get older, you can, um, hopefully your feet get big. You can have all my shoes. You can have all my Yeezys. You like Yeezys? Oh, yeah, I like them, Daddy. Yeah, and then I'll give you my, um, my Jordans, and you can have all my Vans. I saw a seashell. A seashell? Yeah. Why you didn't pick it up? Go. <laughs> go, go. Get it, get it, get it. Get it. Get it. Cure. I just want to say thanks for everybody that came out. The reason why all y'all here is because y'all hold a special place in my heart as people that was my support over the years with whether it be in life or just with things with the barbershop. One of the biggest lessons I learned over this, this last year and a half was that um, sacrifice isn't, isn't easy at all. We grew up, you know, we didn't, we, uh, parents we struggled, you know, not having places to stay, living with people. And one thing I always said to my dad was like, uh, he beats himself up, he said, you know, I wish we ought to have more money to give you guys and to do for you. I wish I'd have known this and knew that. I would have made different decisions. But I'm telling you, everything that you did for me, everything that you gave me, was exactly what God needed for you to have in order for me to be who I am today. The fact that you stayed and you stuck it out, even when your dad left, that meant, means the most to me. The days you worked at the barbershop, not making money and us struggling, people from the church having to bring us food to the house because we didn't have, I appreciate it because you taught me to never quit, that giving up was never an option, it's, it's never a choice, that anything you want in life, you have to work hard for it and understand that it's not gonna be easy, but it'll be worth it. That I was gonna be a great man, <clears throat> and that barber was gonna change my life and everybody else around me. And all of that stuff that you said came true. I love you, dog. I'm so proud of you, man. I'm so proud of you, bro. I love you, man. Look where you at, bro. This is crazy, man. What have you been through? And what have you done to cure your situation, cure your thoughts, change your life, cure what's wrong? When you walk out of the shop, you should feel a little taller, a little lighter, Maybe like you might stop a little traffic. You might, you know, maybe you need to go get a drink and just because you, you're feeling yourself, you can't, you're not going to go home now. Like you're cured, man. In, improving the community, one haircut at a time. Like we keep it at that level to kind of stay as humble as possible, which is what it is. At the same time, like bro, we know it's so many lives that's going to be touched, bro, by the energy that's created in this building. You know what I mean? It's just, you have such a clear perspective when you come to the shop you can look outside all day wind blowing you see people going by but we're creating and generating a form of infrastructure here that is probably not going to be able to be penetrated i got a seat. Robin? said he got shot nine times 
Not just haircuts. You know, as a barber, we build relationships that build into things that, you know, we could never even imagine. We don't we don't know what's gonna come from. He got about the chair and showed where every bullet hole went. I guess the biggest feeling or biggest emotion that came over me was it was humbling. I thought where I was at and what, I, what I, the stuff that I was going through, stuff I've been through was very testing. And to see somebody to, to have, who was living that lifestyle, pay the consequences of that lifestyle, made it out of that lifestyle, and then created a whole new lifestyle and is successful doing well for themselves, it really, really humbled me to say like, I thought things were bad on my end, but it could be a whole lot worse. It could have been a whole lot worse. So for me, it was like more of like, it was humbling and then it was more of um, appreciation to God for keeping me. You gotta find a cure to everything. We're talking about heartbreak. We ain't talking about love. We talking about defeat. You gotta learn how to cure those things too. Cure can mean the world to any and to everybody. I was sitting on his chair one day and it was killing my ass because he had no padding on the chair. And I said, we need to get rid of this piece of shit. And he said to me, well, I ain't got the money. I said, I'm gonna give you the money and you're gonna give me free haircuts. And we're gonna barter it. So that's what we did, we bought it. So I spent like 400 bucks on the chair and we divided that, of course, I had to throw some extra cuts in there because there's interest, right? And that was his first lesson of, of making a deal, an equal, equitable deal for both of us. Because with the new chair, his clients would no longer not say what they wanted to say. I met Bones in seventh grade. He's been my brother ever since. First started producing music. He was the first one to show my beats too. Um, even if they were whack, he would tell me they were fire. So he's always motivated. Um, yeah, man, he helped me through a lot. He's always looking out to help somebody, push them, inspire them. You know, he's one of the best motivational speakers I've ever seen. And even when we just talk, he's just always like so, it just, it just comes so natural to him. You know what I mean, I have a bad day, come talk to him, I, I leave the barbershop feeling good. You know what I'm saying? So he's, he's always there. Always taking the stress off my shoulders, you know, he's always been there for me. Uh, cure to me is how I see it would be um, using your gift, your God given gift, to help others by like paying it forward, basically. Because um, you never know who you're talking to and what you say to them can help cure them in any way, you know what I mean? So let's say with my music, if someone hears something, it, it just takes something in their brain and it makes them happy, you know what I'm saying? I'm sure with Corey too, every day he sees hundreds of people a week. And I guarantee you, every single person he sees, they leave different. You just assume that you're gonna win. And that the ideal situation would be to break and hit the eight ball in and automatically win. But most cases, the none, that doesn't happen. You're hit with a lot of obstacles that come, but the objective is to constantly be working making sure you're setting up the next ball to accomplish the objective, adjusting to different scenarios and not allowing the, the balls being stacked up or life being stacked up against you to intimidate you and kind of knock you off course. Just remember that the game's still going. You know, as long as that ball is still on the table and it's not clear, you still have an opportunity to make change, to have an opportunity to eventually accomplish your goal. You know, you're always setting yourself up, you're always pushing towards something, working towards something which ultimately is knocking a ball in. When I got pregnant, it probably boosted up his, his, his spirits and his, his encouragement. I mean, everything in general, like, to 100. Once he knew I was pregnant, he pretty much was like, I'm gonna make sure that everything's great. He didn't necessarily have an idea of opening up a barbershop, but he did go ahead and, and make that, that decision to be a provider, be a mentor and kind of um, 
pretty much help people because you know we also helped him so he wanted to help people um, to try to pursue their goals. You see somebody like Corey who's doing doing things in his community and doing things you know on social media that are actually affecting change you know he's a he's a really uh, you know beautiful example of somebody who's keeping themselves grounded in, in, in what I like to call the sandbox them, right? Like when you're just a little kid and you're playing, like what, it, what is it about life that you love? And like he's, he's continuing with that as he, as he grows. As, as I was going for cuts, I used to always ask him, why do you keep paying this rent every week? He goes, why, I have my own little thing. I said, no, your own little thing is when you're collecting all of the rent. And it was a little too much for him at that time to comprehend. It was um, probably a little overwhelming for him because he just went to a new shop and he probably wasn't 100% secure with his cuts at that point. But as he started getting into the speaking and the, the, and the teaching part, he started to realize he's surrounded around business owners and maybe there's only a few select of those people traveling that don't own their own business. And he was one of those. So we started talking about it seriously. The, a little bit of the foundation of Cure is, you know, the, the background of that name. You know, coming from a blacksmith, the process that it takes when you're, you're ridding metals of the impurities, you know what I mean? Like, that's what we're doing here. And again, it's not just haircuts. You know, as a barber, we're a psychologist, a therapist, all of that in one, you know what I mean? I, I always try to make sure I, I speak to a lot of people that sit down in my chair, you know I mean? You never know what difference you might make to them. So here at Cure, that's what we trying to do. You know what I mean? Like we, we hitting people one by one in the city. You know what I mean? So to me, Cure is like exactly that. It's curing not only haircuts, relationships, any emotional problems you may be going through. You know what I mean? Like we're helping people get through those things. You know what I mean? Even with myself being here, it, it, you know, with all of us being here, we're all working on ourselves as well. You know, we all push each other to do better, do more. Simply, Cure is, um, it's a few things. It's uh, longevity to me. It's uh, stability. It's a foundation. It's, it's my legacy. This building, these four walls. It is the testament of hard work. It is uh, the proof and the, the knowing that my son will be okay, no matter what. And I had a conversation with God, and I told God that, you know, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna abort this baby. The baby's gonna be a blessing, and that I would give him back to him to serve God. And that's what I did. Um, Corey, to me, was healing for things that I went through, like rejection and abandonment, feeling, you know, like I was no one. I can say Corey can be like really good medicine to people, you know? Um, I can say he was good medicine to me, you know? Uh, because we went through a lot. A, a lot of lot of stuff that we struggled with um, and out of the 10 years that that we've known each other I can say that he's pretty much cured me from from my struggles you know and and I feel the same for him you know I hope I've cured him for for his struggles you know because we were pretty much a team you know and um, if 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 and when we did separate. I can tell you that I struggled for a long time, but when he told me that he named this barbershop Cure, I think he just, I think our relationship cured from like all the pain that what we went through, you know? Um, so he wants to do that for others. You know, he wants to kind of cure others from either like their bad haircuts or like, you know, their, uh, their past, past trials um, and current trials. Um, so I honestly think that's actually a perfect name, I think, for anything in general, only because as well for him, he struggled so much in the past that now 
that there's so many things that are cured. Like, you know, he has a son, he got his barbershop. He might not have everything that he wants, but he definitely has that, that goal to get it. And I see that he's, you know, grinding for that. He pushes me to want to be better. And he's such an encouraging, just to sit back and watch his struggle and his sacrifice helps me to say, hey, there is a future outside of what I'm dealing with right now that I, I definitely can do it. If Corey can do it, you know, I can do it. And he supports me 100% in whatever I want to do. He's always encouraging. He'll just come and give me a hug. I love you, mom, you know. So just to watch him get to where he is and see his determination, it helps me to be even that much more. <laughs> He went through some harsh storms and he was able to still stand. Not only do he stand, he stands in love. He stands in forgiveness. He stands in hope. He stands in um, uh, unity. Bringing back broken relationships in families together. Relationships, because in, in, in life, the most important thing is not money, it's relationships. When you die, people don't remember your money. You die, you drop dead, you got a pocket full of money, somebody can take that money, it's gone. But you can't take a memory from somebody. With Cure, you know, you bring back the peace and the hope into relationships, into families. Brothers and sisters, you know, uh, father and son, mother and daughter, all of that, you bring that back. Because there is still, regardless of what a person may go through, you wake up, the, if you wake up the next day, there's opportunity to bring healing. I can honestly say I know now I had to go through the stuff that I went through to be able to be where I'm at right now with my shop. I never wanted a barbershop with the name like Bones Barbershop or Corey's Barbershop or something cuts. I wanted something that would speak to people who didn't even want to come here to get a haircut. People who will never come that we'll never be able to. I wanted a message. I wanted a statement. I wanted something that would affect people's lives other than me having to give them a haircut because I'm more than just a barber. Barber, my boy Lou says all the time, barbering is what I do, it's not who I am. I'm not a barber. I just happen to cut hair really good. Barbering is my, my vehicle to my calling. My calling is to bring change. In what way, you know, God will tell it. At the end of my life, I'll be able to, people will be able to see how I brought change. But the easiest way for me to bring change when I was in my lowest form was to give somebody a haircut, to sew back into them. So I never wanted the name to be attached to just one thing, which is barbering, because I knew that this was just the foundation that was gonna open up so many doors for me to be able to help so many people. And the name, the brand would transcend the barber industry. I'm willing to give my last and do whatever it takes to help people. I wanted my shop to be a cornerstone for the community, a place where people can come and be fed, you know, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and feel leaving here whole. You know, I wanted it's a place where People can come in and pour their heart out. I've had men in here already in my chair crying. You know, it's, this, is, this is bigger than barbering for me. This is my tool, you know? This is my tool to help. This barbershop is my avenue to cure people, you know? Like people go to a hospital, it's called hospital, that's where you go to get fixed. You know, I named this place here because I'm gonna bring change. I'm gonna change your life one way or the other. The community's gonna be changed one way or the other. My mark's gonna be left one way or the other. And it's gonna start from in this barbershop, standing behind my chair and using my clippers. I thank God, man, the, the, the name came to me and I immediately knew. I didn't wanna put Cure Barbershop, nothing. It's just cure. That's it. Because that's what you're getting when you come here. 
That's what we're gonna do to the community. That's what I'm gonna do for my son, for my family. So that's what cure means to me as broadly as I can stretch it out and make it, and break it down to the simplest form is, it is, a, it is a name, it is a brand, it is a symbol of change. I needed medicine. And not the kind that you pop or mix with Sprite or roll up in light. I needed medicine. I needed a real drug. I needed something stronger. I supersonic boom past the gateway. I'm on to the bigger and badder stuff. The stuff that you can't come back from. The stuff that makes you weak in the knees. That has you messed up for hours, days, and weeks, years. I needed medicine. I needed to cure myself. I was sick. I'd wake up in the middle of the night in cold sweats doing whatever I could to make it end just to get back to bed. Crawl back to that place where I didn't have control. Where I was safe for myself where no one could tell me anything because I wasn't aware I wasn't conscious if the house caught fire I wouldn't notice if it burned but I had to go through the fire because in the word we are called to be put through the furnace for we are as gold my sisters and brothers but gold has to be put through the fire in order for its impurities to be extracted and removed be put through the fire for in the fire your impurities are shown but cast it off for a better finish a spotless finish go through the fire because it is within the fire that you'll find your medicine your You'll find a true drug, the original vice of mankind. Love, love yourself, embrace the fire and dare, dare to cure yourself.